Would you like to sit either side of me where you like? Thank you. So um, you have seven participants, seven biobankers in front of you. Um, I was probably one of the last people to get signed up. I've, I've had everything scanned and tested. It's an occupational... Somebody was saying, well, what medical conditions have you got? And in fact, it's just a, an occupational hazard of being the BBC's medical correspondent. And basically, any medical tests I do, they get, uh, they get filmed. So um, <laughs> I'd like to introduce... Um, uh, on my left um, at the end is Eve Comsey, and uh, then we've got uh, Carl um, Finlay and Bo Novak, and on my right, David Walker, who's on the Ethics and Governance Council, um, Marianne Talbot, and uh, lastly, John Mallets. Perfect, got them right. So um, now I imagine, like, like me, or like all the participants, the sort of primary reason was a sense of altruism. It is a great example of, of altruism, but uh, in, in terms of why you signed up for this. But I, I, I'd like to, to find out if any of you had any specific reasons why you joined UK Biobank. I know you have, Bo. Do you want to grab the mic there? That sounds like an invitation to start. Hello, sorry. Um, I did think it was a fantastic idea, and I'm thrilled to hear it's being used internationally as well. For me, I was interested in what happens over long periods of time to women like me. I'm uh, a woman who's not had any children. I've not spent much of my life on hormonal contraception. I'm 50 years old. I'm not planning to have HRT if I can help it. And I'm also vegan. So I'm interested in whether my lifestyle is going to affect my health and how I and, and so would you like to, when those studies do come through, probably take many more years for them to come through, would you like them to drop in your email inbox? Of course, if I'm, al if I'm alive. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think what's interesting about this study is it's not just looking at one thing. It's just not looking at nutrition alone or um, exercise alone or medication alone. It's all the things together, yeah. which seems to me much more holistic than sensible. Um, I mean, even things I've done, I think I have a very healthy lifestyle, but I have, for instance, tattoos. And 20 years ago, tattooing was quite toxic, possibly. So I'm interested in being in a study that will follow a lot of different people mm. who've had all these different lifestyle factors okay. looked together. And anyone else? Uh, yeah, Marion, would you take the... Uh... Um, I was particularly interested in the dementia aspect because both my parents had dementia, although of different kinds. Um, Alzheimer's in one case and vascular dementia mm. in another case. Uh, and so I was interested primarily for altruistic reasons, but secondarily uh, in the hope of beating this dreadful disease. Good, OK. What I'd like to find out um, from you is the sense of how you feel, it's a very big question, how you feel your participation has been managed in terms of the, the questions you've been asked, um, how long you've been given to answer them, and the sort of feedback and experience. I mean, I, um, uh, if we could uh, ask you, um, uh, Eve, at the end, in terms of, because you had a specific point about, you know, when you get asked to do something. Uh, well, I just felt that um, as far as emails were concerned, they seemed to expire very quickly. You'd get um, an email asking you to participate in a survey, as say, regards your work history, um, and um, or your diet and of course you'd start it and then maybe get on to do something else and then you'd come back to it and it would have expired um, and I just felt that um, you know we're all busy people and that that's my only criticism so far I imagine it's because if it's with diet they, they don't want you to say oh yesterday was a bad day <laughs> I'll do tomorrow. I'll do today. So I suppose, it, but but you were saying with, even with work that that was something as well, which might not be such an issue. Well, well, yes. I mean, you know, certainly with the work history thing, um, mm. uh, I had started it, and being 67 years of age, I started work when I was 16, and there was a lot to go back on. You know, my history, and um, I couldn't always remember everything. And then, of course, you know, I had to either look at a previous CV or speak to somebody just to kind of get an idea. 
And um, once I'd um, gone back to it, mm. it, it, it had gone. So I, I couldn't complete it, which was a shame, really, mm. because I think it would have been valuable in my lifestyle, you know, to, to be used in whatever mm. research that the survey had set up. Um, uh, Carl, you, you, I think, um, what's your experience been like? Yeah, when I initially had, uh, had my stroke, I was uh, directed by Biobank to do the tests and, and whatever. And I thought it would be good to be a part of it because it's, it's knowledge for the future. So you had a stroke, I think, what, in 2004? 2004. Yeah. Um, and and so, so you signed up because you wanted to, to see just what, what was the, the motivation there? Well, I believe like knowledge is power. And if someone can gain from some uh, research, it, it's got to help uh, long term. And you're also on statins. Yeah. So, so that's another big, in a sense, yeah. almost like a research project, because so many people in the UK are on them. Yeah. Uh, so it's another thing you're participating in. Yeah. yeah, just raise your mic yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, I've been on statins uh, since, uh, since I had me bleed, and, and I was told by my neurologist it's sort of like it's Dana Rod for your arteries. So I thought, <laughs> well, if Dana Rod can do that my arteries, that, that will do me fine. <laughs> Now, um, who here amongst the participants has been, had the activity monitors? Um, right, um, would you like to tell me how, how, did, how did that go for you, the activity monitor experience? It was absolutely fine. I mean, the only question I had was in the bath. I, I felt I had to bath with my hand up in the air, which <laughs> for a week. a bit of a downer. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And, and uh, Eve, what? I, I believe mine was over the Christmas period. And of course, you know, you become a bit of a couch potato, plus the fact that you're eating and drinking and not giving a very good um, indication of your normal activity. So, uh, again, that was, for me, um, probably not very accurate. Now, now, one of the huge studies that's, that's really just started recently is the, the scanning, the, the complete body scanning assessment. Who, who, any of you signed up for that? And, yes. and uh, John, I think um, you've, you've actually been on it. Yes, I've, I've so been tell to, us what it was like. Um, I went to Stockport um, to, to uh, an industrial estate, uh, <laughs> but a very, very good setup. Uh, and it was fine. I thought it would be like a hospital where you sit around all morning waiting. But from the moment I went in, I was ushered from A to B, trussed up like a, a turkey and put into the <laughs> MRI. Um, it, it, it was fine. It was a good experience. The fact that you know you're not there for serious um, diagnosis means you don't worry about it as much. I'm not worried about what will they find. I know it's there for a reason. And in terms of people who've not had a, a total body scan where their head goes right into the machine, they can be claustrophobic. Some people will suffer claustrophobia. How was it for you? I had, no pro I had no problems with it at all. I couldn't scratch my nose. I had to, I had to ask one of the ladies to do that. But no, no, it's... <laughs> it's uh, but um, I, I, just on, with me, I've, I've got one of the many scans I've been on was with Jimmy Bell, who's speaking here later this morning, and he did one of these visceral internal fat scans for me, just to, for a, a news story, and then uh, contacted me and he said, you need to talk to your GP, because they'd found a shadow on my left femur. And, uh, it, and to cut a long story short, it was nothing to worry about, but it did mean going through um, two lots of... of other scans, more detailed scans, six months apart. So you didn't get a, any feedback um, saying you need to talk to your GP? No, not at all. When um, I received the literature to go onto the imaging um, scan, um, it did say that if anything was found that was serious, um, you'd be notified about it. And I found that very comforting. Uh, you know, if there's something, I'll find it. Yes, that is one of the things with um, Biobank that most of the time, you don't get any personal feedback, and certainly the, the, the total body scans are not meant to be a personal health check, but they will contact you if there's really something that you need, to, if they, they spot something that you really need to have investigated. I'm just wondering, does, does anyone ever have a sense of, um, not frustration, but desire that you'd quite like to get a bit of personal feedback there, or, or, or are we all completely altruistic? Does anybody feel that they would like to know things? Well, well I realise with so many people on the scheme, it's not practical. No, true. Um, so I, I, I have no expectation of David, receiving anything back. David, you're on the Ethics and Governance Council. I'm just wondering, because uh, I, I was the first person to be part of this, the John Gallagher cognitive testing thing, where they retest, they do all these quick memory tests and uh, activation tests, and I would have loved to find out 
how much slower am I? <laughs> you know, because we're all going to be slower. But, you know, was I good? I mean, in our discussions, I mean, we, I think, have to make a big distinction, as Biobank does, between research, which will, we hope, we know, be for general benefit, and medical interventions which affect individuals. And I think, you know, we're talking about the scans. It's been a big issue for, in our discussions as to how far we should expect uh, those conducting the scans to actually look in detail for potential problems. Um, that sounds like a medical intervention for an individual as opposed to a, a research procedure which is gathering information for storage and, 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 and future use. So that, I think that's a, that's a real boundary in this study between how far it is, as it were, helping us as an individual know something about our condition and our c contribution of our data to that wider, wider project. And there are points, and I think the scans are one, where the boundary is perhaps slightly tricky to, to navigate. Yes, because if you had somebody who, who did the, that testing and they really clearly had trouble, is there an ethical duty then to flag that up? There is a body of case law which we've, and the Biobank, have paid a lot of attention to. Um, a, a radiographer, a radiologist, will be obliged by their professional codes to be attentive, but the study doesn't enjoin them to, 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 to pour over the, the, uh, the images in the way that uh, a consultant or a, a GP might. So, again, it, it, it's, a, it's a slightly sort of grey area, but we hope and expect that the professional codes of those conducting the studies will uh, push them to identify any major problems that uh, look, you know, look, look pretty obvious. It's the going beyond that to study the images for other things. I mean, shadow, you mentioned the shadow, Fergus. I mean, you know, our bodies are full of potential shadowy areas. Yes. And uh, this is not a, a medical study. It's a research project. Yeah. Um, in terms of, of what Biobank has asked you to do, um, the, 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 the online surveys and wearing activity monitors and now scanning, is there anything that, that any of you feel, I, I wish they'd ask me that, I wish they'd look into this? Is there anything where you feel, actually, I want them to, to study more? Yeah, Marianne. Um, it was interesting you mentioned mini mental state exams or anyway mm. cognitive tests. Um, nobody's asked me to do a t cognitive test and yet that's the thing I'm really interested ah, yes. in. Well, that's the, um, I suppose that's the random although, nature, but you would really I'm not like going to, to get no. any information back, I suppose it's... But, but it, would still, it would be nice to, that you were one of the people on that study. I, I would like very much to be one of the people on that study. I would have liked if to be one If anyone's listening of, who yeah. can make me on that study, I... I, I <laughs> I've got an acti I wanted to be one of the people who got an uh, activity monitor, but I didn't get one of those. So it's, 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 we, could random, we could have swapped. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Um, no. But let, me, let me go on to um, one issue. Um, in terms of, of uh, half of the UK population at some point in their lives will we'll get a, a diagnosis of cancer. Um, and obviously that includes uh, biobank participants. Um, and one of the things that um, I know that the biobank would like to do is they'd like to get access to um, biopsy samples. Um, and I wonder whether the participants, I'd like to ask all of you this opinion, whether you feel in the huge amount of uh, of permissions that you've already given, you've already given your DNA and you've already given huge amounts of detail, whether you feel you've already um, given permission for Biobank to, to access your samples, um, leftover samples from a, a cancer diagnosis. Um, start with you, Eve. No, I, I wasn't um, aware that we had been asked that question. But would you be, would you be happy for, for samples to be used by Biobank? Yes, I would, but as we discussed earlier, I think I would like to be asked first and informed that they were going to do that. But okay. yes, no, no problem with that whatsoever, because that's the ethos of, of Biobank. Okay. And pass the mic on to, to Carl, what do you think? Yeah, I would have uh, no objections to uh, any sample tissue someone's been used. With, but with do you feel you want to be asked first? Uh, no. No, no you're, so you're fine, you, as yeah, far as you're concerned, yeah. it's, it's done, and on to, on to Bo. Uh, I think it's a logical next step, and I really welcome that work, but I don't feel it was in the original uh, invitation, and I think it's really important that there's explicit um, consent sought. 
Okay. And it, that it's done before it becomes okay. um, a live issue for any individual. So it's done as a sort of blanket, if that's what Biobank is starting to look at. Okay. Uh, John, um, you've got personal uh, cancer experience. What, what's your uh, view on this in terms of samples and things? Well, in 1995, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer and um, had, I think it was the right testicle removed. And I remember asking the consultant in the bed, can I have it in a jar to put on my mantelpiece? <laughs> he, said, he said, no, he says it's going to be used for research, which was fine. I would be quite happy for any of my samples at any time to be used for any, any type of research. And do you feel that you've, in a sense, already given consent for that? I hadn't given it any, any thought, but um, I can see it being incorporated in, yes. I would have no problems with this. OK. And Marianne? Um, I agree with Bo. I, I don't feel consent was taken for that, uh, and I would like to be asked, and I'd quite like to be asked now. OK. If you pass on, uh, David, you're on the Ethics and Governance Council. Yeah, I mean, this is an ongoing, this particular uh, issue is ongoing uh, in discussion. I mean, one of the questions is whether the original consent, which we all gave for records to be kept, includes tissue. Whether, and again, there is, there is some legal case law on this. Um, uh, one of the problems, or one of the great beauties of Biobank, rather, is that it's in, in real time, technology, medical knowledge, uh, our understanding of the basic science of our anatomy is changing. And so, you know, we all gave original consent some years ago. Do we, will we have to keep going back to participants if things change in the way that uh, scientists may, may want to inquire into something new? So there is a bit of a, I mean, clearly there's a practical issue in terms of the, the cost of going back. So, but the, the wider question is, did we not, as participants, uh, engage ourselves with a, an open-ended project in which it's now come to light that tissue samples are a potentially very important part. Yes, and if you think about the DNA that we all gave, uh, we are learning more and more about the genetic origins of disease. Say, for example, in, in five, ten years' time, I know, it, I know it's, these things are not as simple as that, but they find particular markers that pretty much mark us out, say, for certain types of dementia or heart disease where there might be interventions that would help. You, one could argue, well, you know, we know there are 27,000 uh, biobank participants who are still alive who could really benefit from, from having an investigation here. What, might there be a, 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 an ethical argument that one, they should be contacted, even though it's not a personal, uh, intended as a sort of diagnostic tool for individuals? Yes, but in the real world, there is a cost consideration. You, know, you, you and your colleagues cover the NHS regularly. Um, the NHS, I mean, already there is an interaction, we know, between Biobank and the NHS, because if, if radiographers, radiologists discover something, they refer you to your GP, and that potentially adds, given the number of false positives that can be found uh, across the NHS. So I think there is a, there's an ethical issue, right, but there's also a quite substantial cost issue for the MRC, for Wellcome and those who fund the study. It was not intended to be a study of direct benefit to us as individuals. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be of general benefit, and I think, you know, yeah, think we, did, we didn't that. enter it expecting we, us to be yeah. given a, a specific uh, No, that's true. Well, I think, and, and I think it's really just with the scanning that, that that's really first entered into people's minds. They're, they're having a physical, you know, architectural look at your, your body. That, that you, that's the one where you might feel that you, you want some kind of feedback because they're having a good look around inside you, which feels more, it's not invasive, but in a strange way it feels more invasive than giving a blood or a urine sample or jumping on an exercise bike. Yes, but again, I think there is a sense with research that you know we our data is anonymized. You know, you've been to Stockport and you see these great banks of stored uh, stored material. You know, we, we rightly, I think, surrender an amount of our individuality by participating in this general study. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I think even with the scans, I mean, th that information will be brigaded in ways uh, which can be linked to conditions or not in terms of our lives as individuals, but in terms of our possession of a particular predisposition or condition. Do, do different countries that have um, similar things or, or similar projects, do they do things ethically differently? Well, um, it, it particularly, particularly in present political context, one hesitates to say Britain's ahead, mm -hmm. but it is the case that 
both with Biobank and the discussions around Biobank, we're pretty far ahead of most other uh, European countries, partly because of the size of the Biobank study, partly because of the nature of the NHS. It, it, we're not aware, I mean, clearly there are conversations which go on in Germany, Norway, and, uh, and other European countries, but uh, it, it's hard to get a, a direct parallel to the scale and the intensity of, of Biobank. Um, in terms of the, the level of contact that, that Biobank has with you, do you, do any of you feel that you're, you'd like more contact from them, more emails, more notice about, do you feel you're getting enough, um, you know, we heard there'd been several hundred studies published, would you like them to drop into your inbox, even if you're not uh, um, uh, scientifically minded, would you like to, when there is a new biobank-related study, would you like to, to, to be, have notification of it, Eve? Mind, as long as there's not too much jargon, in which case you know it will there be almost certainly will be lots of jargon. Well, exactly, you know. Um, <laughs> Carl, what about you? Yeah, I, yes, I would like to be informed, especially if it related to what I, what happened to me. It was relevant to my illness. Yeah. Um, well, in terms of so anything to do with that, the, the difficulty is trying to sort of filter out ones. Anything yeah. to do with stroke or other things, filtering that for individuals. Obviously, that would be tricky. So you either get it's kind of all or nothing, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Um, and Bo, I think I'd be happy with maybe an annual report or an update annually on the okay. website, because I don't think I could make much sense no. of the technical nature of a lot okay. of the studies. No, absolutely. Um, Marianne, what about you? I, I would quite like to get everything um, because I can always delete the things. Yeah, I don't find interesting. But the, certainly the annual But there is, if there's a cost update, implication, I'm quite happy not but, to have. Yes. Um, but it, but, uh, as there would be, I'm yeah. sure. Um, and, and John, what about you? I think you might give me a, a sense of belonging, being a greater part of, of Biobank than just being a tiny little brick in the wall. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, one of the, uh, when we, uh, I mean, I've forgotten a lot about what, I, what they asked me at the beginning, but one of the, they, they asked about things to do with socioeconomic things and tax. David, you'd specifically have some views on, on terms of tax data. Well, I mean, this is obviously not something directly involving Biobank. And I mean, we should be aware that, again, perhaps uniquely in the UK, we do have a number of long, what are called longitudinal studies, studies which pick up data from the same people over a period of time. And you know, obviously, one thing that you pick up, pretty obvious, I suppose, is that the amount of money in your household when you're a child does tend to affect what happens to you in life. And it could be, uh, potentially at some point, that linkage of the data that Biobank is producing with other things which tell us about our backgrounds, how we grew up, what our parents were like, what jobs our parents did, and our income might be of some potential use. Now, obviously, people get very, uh, uh, some people particularly alarmed about the idea there income tax payments might be made public. But, I mean, there are elsewhere in, in, in these studies very tight protocols about uh, anonymizing or uh, de-identifying uh, data. So uh, it's just that potentially at some point linkage of potential to have a stroke or get cancer with home circumstances and the amount of money you have could be an interesting line of inquiry. And at that point linkage between biobank data and data held by HMRC might be possible, subject, of course, to all sorts of safeguards. I, I imagine, well, and let me ask, how would you feel about your tax um, returns being linked to your biobank data? Do you think you've given permission for that, um, Bo? I think I'd need to think about that. I think... Um, <laughs> I think it's it's a it's a it's a valid mm. question to ask, and where people live as well as what they earn in their socio-economic circumstances. I suppose it depends on level of detail and you know how the information is going to be elicited. But in principle, mm. Carl. Well, actually, I'm self-employed, so my tax records go to the tax man every year, so it's it's available data as it is. Yeah, yeah, and Eve. Well, no, I, I wouldn't really have a problem because I'm sure, like everything else with Biobank, it would be confidential and not used for anything other than the, the link to the study. Marianne? I'm not rich, but I live enough to worry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and John? Definitely not. Definitely not? No, okay. I, I can see that my medical data 
might be of benefit to somebody. I can't see how my financial data um, is of any medical benefit. Okay. Sociological maybe, but... Yeah, okay. Um, well, we, we're out of time now, but I, I'm really very grateful to you all. It's been really fascinating. And what I'm very happy that um, Biobank has done is they've put the participants you know, uh, right at the front of this, this um, meeting. And I think it's a sign of just how valued the, the half a million people are. Um, so thank you to them, and thanks all of you for coming here this morning. Thank you.